Welcome to Louisa May Alcott's Orchard House here in Concord, Massachusetts, where Louisa May Alcott wrote and set Little Women in 1868. When visitors come to this house from all over the world, as the book was translated into over 50 languages, people often ask, well, what was real? What part of Little Women was true to the Alcott family? The heart of this book is their story. The father is Amos Bronson Alcott, and in Little Women, he is the Reverend Mr. March. The mother, known as Marmy, was Abigail May Alcott. The oldest daughter, Anna, is Meg in the book. The second daughter, Louisa May Alcott, is Joe. The third daughter, Elizabeth, or Beth, is the only one whose name does not change. When Louisa wrote Little Women, she felt that she could immortalize Beth. She could keep her a little closer by putting her in the book in this way. The youngest daughter in real life is Abigail May Alcott. She did go by her middle name, May, and in the book, she is Amy. When Greta Gerwig chose to bring her cast and crew here to Orchard House, I was delighted to see how important authenticity was to this group of people. They wanted to understand the real models for the characters they were going to portray. They wanted to get the look and the feel of this house in the movie because they knew how important it was to Louisa when she set the story here. One person I want to mention is Jess Goncher, the production designer. I learned that it is really his job to, I would say, create sort of a canvas that is ready for Greta's vision of the film. For days we were together looking at floor plans and paint colors and finding ways to recreate this very quirky house that Bronson Alcott had sort of cobbled together to make livable for his family. I visited that house probably 10 times, became very friendly with the head curator over there, Jan, and she was very available to us. We spent time at Louisa May Alcott's house, and when we saw that, we thought, well, we know exactly who that family is. The story takes place in that house, and then sort of, you know, evolves, but they all seem to go back, you know what I mean? It's like, that's the, uh, that's the anchor of this movie, is that, is that house. Now, when the family bought this property in 1857, it was at the behest of Ralph Waldo Emerson, their close neighbor and very dear friend. Both men were transcendental philosophers. They were very close friends with other transcendentalists of the day, such as Margaret Fuller and Henry David Thoreau, a very dear friend to this family as well, in this home many times. And of course, they had a next door neighbor, Nathaniel Hawthorne. So this family was surrounded by amazing writers and thinkers. And when they lived in this house, they were constantly entertaining. All of these people and many others were here night after night. They performed plays in this dining room. Mrs. Alcott was a wonderful costumer and encourager of those dramatics. This property was known for a fabulous apple orchard. The building, however, the house that we are now standing in was considered ready for firewood. It was over 200 years old already. It was in dreadful condition in 1857 and did need to be torn down in the opinion of basically everyone in town. Mr. Alcott surprised them by, with workmen, repairing and adding on to the house and his daughters painted and papered and worked very hard on the interior. Beth was very ill. She was in this house many, many times watching them do this, watching their excitement of having finally an anchoring place. When they lost Beth and then moved here into Orchard House, Louisa said that in this home, Beth would be more truly what they had always called her, their angel in the house. So many people do ask, what is real in Little Women? Louise did make superficial changes. Many names are changed. 
Time is changed. She takes their young years, which were lived before the Civil War, and moves their young years into wartime. That way, father could be off at war. In reality, Mr. Alcott was too old to go. It was Louisa who went. She was a nurse for the Union Army. She was the one who was very ill. She was the one for whom a telegram came to this house. But in Little Women, that all happens to father. So she gives him her war experience which was important for several reasons. For one thing, it was more acceptable socially. A woman as a nurse was shocking. That was not encouraged. In fact, it was considered not only dangerous, but unladylike. And Louisa did it anyway, with great pride. When you come to Orchard House and see the desk where Little Women was written, remember that Mr. Alcott built Louisa that desk in an era when it was considered improper for a woman to have a desk of her own, that made her seem like a serious writer, someone who might even publish, and that would put her in the public sphere. A woman belongs in the private sphere. So the issue there was that women could write letters, but don't write seriously, don't have a desk. Mr. Alcott gave his daughter a wonderful sense of agency by building her that desk. Her mother gave her a pen with a note that said, May this pen your muse inspire when wrapped in pure poetic fire. Again, giving her daughter agency. As I mentioned, Orchard House was nearly destroyed in 1857 and Bronson Alcott saved it. Fast forward to 1910, when the house was in such dreadful condition again that it was, according to the real estate prospectus, the perfect site for a new mansion. Everyone again assumed it would now be destroyed. But there was a woman living next door who saw people clutching copies of Little Women peeking in the windows and thought that house should be preserved. She bought the house and then set about finding other women who would agree and form a corporation, the Louisa May Alcott Memorial Association. Today, we are known as Louisa May Alcott's Orchard House. It is remarkable that this house, standing here since the mid-1600s, was almost destroyed three times. Bronson Alcott saved it in 1857. The women of Concord saved it in 1911. And people like you helped us save it in 2000 to 2002. Because the structure was sinking unevenly into the ground, we had to hand dig a foundation under the entire place. And before we could do that, the walls themselves had to be strengthened because the house was a little like a soggy cardboard box. So we are grateful for that success. But when people say to me, oh, you must be so relieved, you're done, that was a massive project, I remind them, far from it. An old house like this is good at delivering surprises. The fact that the house is still standing and you go and see the house and you see the bedroom and you see how much they relied on each other. Being able to visit Orchard House and see her bedroom and see who would have been Amy's drawings on the wall, you really see how much Louise's life and also her mother's life has informed Little Women the book. It has been said that Orchard House has a soul. I believe that's true, not only because the Alcott family led exemplary lives, but also because the stewards of this home today understand how important it is to continue to serve as nurture and inspiration for visitors who come and inspire us with their own stories so that together we may take this little portion of the world and make the most positive impact that we can.
Thank mm-hmm. you.